So here we have a cross-sectional area problem, pretty difficult one uh, for several reasons. Um, it uses equilateral triangles, perpendicular y-axis, uh, we'll see in a bit. So let me jump right in and uh, give you a quick visual of what it looks like. Go, oh, oh. make that a little straighter. Okay, pink line, um, eight y equals x squared. I'm gonna divide by eight on both sides and end up with a parabola that's a little fatter because of the one eight. So that it's also bounded by the horizontal line y equals two. Okay, they say the cross-sectional um, each cross-section is perpendicular to the y-axis. So the base of each, oops, the base of each triangle goes from right all the way to the left, okay? Right minus left, like this, all right? So if I pull out, so let me, example, okay? Let me take out one of these uh, triangles here. Side, okay. The base length, remember that the uh, parabola well, hold on, let me rewind a little bit too. Um, the triangles are being added in a vertical way to get that entire volume of triangles, okay? Key thing, if it's added in a vertical direction, that's a dy setup, all right? So everything needs to be in terms of y when you set up your integral, okay? That's one thing. Uh, the second thing, if you need to do that, then the pink curve in terms of y, okay, we need to get x by itself then. So that's gonna be plus minus square root eight y, equals x okay so i just do the square root on both sides so that means this part right here is square root positive square root 8y this side right here is negative square root 8y okay so now we're ready to set up parts of our triangle i think we're going to make this even larger all right <laughs> so we can get the full view of this it's gonna take a lot of work um so that means if you want the base length of the equilateral triangle from right to left, okay, right minus left, all right, that's going to be square root 8y minus negative square root 8y, okay, to get me 2 root 8y, okay, negative minus negative is positive, uh, it's positive so you add those. Um, the thing is, if you, remember, we're adding semi integral Okay, from zero to two, that's dy. Um, for the area of the triangles, okay, dy. So that means we need the area, a general expression for the area of one triangle, all right? And in that case, it's gonna be one half base times height. We already have the base, okay? But the height though, let's take a look, okay? If this is an equilateral triangle, that means all the angles are 60 degrees. If I draw the um, height, okay, oops, I'll cut that in half to be 30 degrees. So we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Um, that means if I just look at only the right half of this, this is only gonna be root eight Y, which is half of the total base. Um, you gotta go back to geometry. Remember 30, 60, 90 triangles. So remember that, let's see here. The root eight Y, this side right here is opposite 30 degrees, okay? And the rule goes, the side that's opposite, 30, six, opposite 60 degrees is always root three times greater than whatever this side's gonna be, okay? So I'm gonna do that here. Root three times root eight y is root twenty four y. You know what? Let's just already simplify that. You could um, actually not. Well, I'll just keep it like that. Okay. Now we can finally bring in the heights and the base. And start working on that math. Let's see, one half two root eight y times root twenty four y. All right, so now to simplify this, it's gonna be roots eight times eight times three times y squared. Take out the eight and the y, so you just get root three on the inside there. That makes it a little easier. 
Okay, so we have our areas expression. Okay, eight y root three dy. Let's do this fast. Uh, you can take out take out anything, all the coefficients. That's going to be two squared over two is four. Oh, just kidding. Four over two is two. So that's going to be 16 root three. Here we go. 